So Neil, we're gonna start with you. Why don't Why don't you tell us the uh, significance of Prematurity Awareness Month? Since it is November, for all of you who are not aware, this month is Prematurity Awareness Month. Sure. The significance is that a March of Dimes, since its since its inception, has really looked to make a difference in the community, both locally as well as nationally and now internationally. So mm -hmm. Prematurity Awareness Month really focuses in on the fact that over 500,000 babies a year are born too soon and too sick. And it's an epidemic, and we've really got to do something about that. If we put it in context, uh, one in nine babies in Rhode Island is born prematurely. Now, the, the other side of that coin is eight in nine is born healthy and full term. Mm -hmm. However, that one baby that is born a preterm, purely and simply from a financial perspective, costs more in the first year of life than the other eight babies combined. So that's in the financial side of things. Equally important, if not more important, is the, the fact that there is an emotional cost to the family, to the community, that is at least as important. So we really need to make a difference in that. Mm -hmm. And what Prematurity Awareness Month does is it really focuses in on how we can make a difference. And one day we hope that all babies 100% of the babies will be on full term and healthy, but until that comes, we still need to uh, drive that awareness home. And I'd like to take the time to thank you guys and the March of Dines person, since I was one of those uh, one out of nine babies. I, I read a stat a little earlier. Um, where is it? There it is. In Rhode Island, there are uh, 1,200 babies born too soon, 330 which are born with a defect, and I fall into that fold. Uh, really? Yeah, I was. I, I like to think of this as like my uh, my preemptive smiting. Uh -huh. uh, I was supposed to be born on Christmas, right. but instead I was born on Pearl Harbor Day. <laughs> so Santa arrived a little bit early. A little bit. <laughs> But uh, on the flip side of that, I also, uh, I got really lucky. I have uh, high-functioning Asperger's syndrome. Yeah. So uh, some pe some doctors say it was a result of the prematurity. Some people say that it was just bound to happen either way. But uh, I'll, I'll take it as is because I, I couldn't do anything about it. I was a little... I was a peanut as a child. I, I don't even think I weighed five pounds when I was born, honestly. Right. But... Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when um, when I mentioned that I was doing this radio thing, my mom was like, "Hey, you can thank them; they saved your life." I was like, oh. "Okay." <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, now the money that we're raising today, you know, through the radio thon, the concert, and other means, where does it all go? It goes to support the programs that we have both locally and nationally. So, for example, uh, locally at Women in Infants Hospital we have got a, a NICU family support program. NICU purely and simply means neonatal intensive care unit. So mm -hmm. if you imagine an intensive care unit, a unit where the folks who are extremely sick uh, are assisted, the neonatal intensive care unit is where these little babies are born who are incredibly sick. So mm -hmm. to the extent that if you can imagine a mom or a dad, babies born prematurely, sometimes they can't touch these babies for, for weeks on end. So to the extent of being able to celebrate and really work towards the milestones in these babies' lives, part of what we are able to do is introduce programs that really allow the parents to be a part of that, a, of that process. So on a very local level, mm. that's what we do. Beyond that, we have got uh, national programs that really look to fund research into the causes of premature birth. Mm. And uh, we are making progress. In Rhode Island, what I'm delighted to be able to share is that uh, for 2013, the premature birth rate reduced from 11% to 10.2%. So we are moving absolutely in the right direction. We're still a ways to go, but anything and everything we can do in terms of raising awareness and raising funds really is very, very important. So whatever is done here, we can, we can purely and simply uh, apply that towards what we, are, what we are doing both locally as well as nationally. Okay. Uh, also, really quick, uh, Mike, I think that's Jay's phone. Can you take that to him pretty please? 
Uh, <laughs> you want to go recruit up some nice music? Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I didn't do that. Maybe you can. Yeah, that was the, that, the that, hook. That was Pleasant <laughs> <laughs> Cooler saying, I'm in, I'm in for some more money. <laughs> Speaking of money, if you guys want to donate to this wonderful cause, you can call 401-456-8787 or 401-456-9946, that's WXIN. I found that on my freshman year and I was astounded. Uh, and if you don't like the phones, you can either go to www.marchofdimes.org slash Rhode Island, not R.I., please no, and, uh, or you can just hop into the radio station and drop off your money uh, as you will. Um, now... Uh, something that you brought up that I wanted to go deeper into. Uh, what are some of these uh, programs and uh, the research that you guys have been doing with the uh, with this funding? So again, if if we uh, we at any one time have got around a hundred million dollars in funding out, predominantly on a national basis, we are very fortunate in the northeast and most specifically in Rhode Island that we are able to fund, for example, Dr. Padbury of Women and Infants Hospital. He has just received uh, earlier on this year a, a $400,000 a research grant over three years. His focus and the focus of what we're doing a lot of right now is into genetics. Okay. Uh, we are finding that we have made some, some phenomenal progress. There's a lot more to be done, but uh, a lot of our research right now is in, in genetics. Uh, and beyond that, it's a, it's a panoply of... Uh, of, of wondrous research that, that is done on a basic science level, they particularly. I know that you guys found the uh, gene responsible for oral clots recently. I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think if you look at the history of March of Dimes over the over the the, the year seventy six years, founded in nineteen thirty eight, FDR, we have got a very very a long and distinguished history of uh, of scientific accomplishment of bringing people together. And that way is what it's all about, whether it's on a fundraising basis, whether it's on a research basis, whether it's on a volunteer basis, that really to bring people together to have them energized and, and work on the cause, really the cause, cause of prematurity, really is incredibly important and incredibly powerful. I agree with you there, and I know you touched into this a little bit, but can you go a little more extensive on the uh, local level that March of Dimes has been doing, just, just in Rhode Island? Sure, sure. Well, as I I'd mentioned, in terms of some national sure, national funding much research, much. we have something in with the <coughs> Women Infants State currently. We also fund a grants on a local basis, a, and they can be very modest grants. It can be fifteen hundred dollars, it can be five thousand dollars, whatever. We have found in recent in recent years that a lot of research and a, a lot of funding is being focused in on prenatal group the health. So, to all intents and purposes. We work with people like uh, Memorial Hospital and other groups to, to bring uh, pregnant mums together in, in groups. And we're finding that the outcomes from that really are very encouraging at this point. So we really seem to feel that uh, there is a way forward for us to move, uh, move the dial on, on, again, bringing people together, ensuring that babies are born healthy and full term. All right, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to move on to a commercial break for right now. Let everyone breathe a little bit. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> we will be right back, so stay tuned to the 90.7 WXIN Airways for Babies Radiothons. Stay tuned. We've been going on for 17 hours, uh, 17 and a quarter wow. now. Um, we are 17 and a quarter in out of 24, so this will be the uh, last leg, the home stretch. You guys rock. We, uh, we try. We certainly try. Um, so I was told during our commercial break that we have a story. We do. <laughs> so um, again, my name is Amy and I'm the Senior Community Director for March of Dimes. Um, but the reason that I work for March of Dimes is that I am the mom of a premature baby. Uh -huh. So I have a 14-month-old daughter who um, surprised us all by coming into the world six weeks early. Um, and because of that, she ended up in the NICU uh, for a little over two weeks, about two weeks. Mm. Um, and as Neil had said, one of the hardest parts about that is that you're not able to, um, I wasn't able to touch her for the first week of Ooh. her life. Um, and I know that a lot of parents out there probably have very similar situations to that. Mm. Um, 
she was born, because she was born six weeks early, um, her lungs were very underdeveloped. So she needed to receive quite a few treatments, one of which um, was actually, the research for was funded by March of Dimes. So a lot of premature babies that are in the NICU receive a treatment called surfactant, which is, um, again, helps babies with um, underdeveloped lungs. So I'm really lucky that um, she was there about two weeks and um, is now a happy, healthy, 14-month-old running around. But you never know um, when something like this could happen to you yeah. or to somebody that you love. So it's so important, all of the work that the March of Dimes does to support um, not only research, but families within the NICU. I was able to participate in some of the activities that he was talking about with um, the family support specialist. Um, and they really do impact that journey that a family is on when they have a child that's born prematurely. So, you know, what could be a very, what's supposed to be sometimes the happiest moment of your life can turn mm -hmm. into something very scary. And knowing that there um, are organizations like the March of Dimes out there that are providing um, critical support to families that do so desperately need it and don't really know where to turn is really important. Uh, not to mention the research that is continuously happening um, in order to, you know, move the dial from one in nine um, to improve what the prematurity rate looks like um, so that other families don't have to necessarily go through what we did. Wow. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and sometimes that's all that can be said. Wow. Wow, yeah. <laughs> And, and one of the things that I would like to just mention to folks, the United States is blessed in so many areas. Uh, in terms of premature birth, albeit that, uh, that we have made great strides, if we look at the, how the United States ranks internationally, it really doesn't do very well. Mm. And 2003, we really focused and we honed in on a being aware of premature birth, being aware of the cost, the emotional cost, the financial cost, the, the cost of businesses, so across the board. And that's why we, we will use the term as a crisis. Something really does need to be done, and as Amy had said rightly, you can be doing absolutely everything right in your pregnancy, you're doing nothing wrong, and something happens, it comes at you right out of left field, and the devastation really shouldn't and can't be measured in dollars and cents. Mm. But one of the things that Marshall Downs is able to do is provide that comfort, is to provide that support, is to provide that education that hopefully makes that, that journey a little bit easier. And my story is a little bit different from Amy's because I've got three children and they were all born full term and healthy. Mm. So although we concentrate on the on these one in nine babies, that's, or that's what seems to be the concentration. In reality, everything we do is really to ensure that all babies and all mothers have the, have the best health outcomes possible. Now, you hit something that uh, I've been curious about since about two in the morning last night <laughs> when I first read about this, and I'm hoping that you can uh, answer my question. How uh, you guys have released a uh, the seventh annual report card that scores the nations in each state in honor of the premature birth, and Rhode Island received a B. Now I don't quite understand how that works. Can you tell us how? Do you know how that uh, that sort of grading system works, or yeah. is that a question for a different person? No, that's that's fine. Michael, would you like to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a set of criteria that, that, that is used, and uh, the, the data is empirical data, and the data chosen is the same data from every single state. So we're, we're really comparing like with like. Okay. And to all intents and purposes, the, the Rhode Island has received a, a, a B that, that A is, 9 point, a is, is less than 10%, so 9.6 or, or, or less. So we are, we are edging towards that. The, the formula, the, the, the protocol and the process is, is a little bit complicated to really describe on the air, okay. but suffice to say it is something where we are using a level the, the ballpark for, the, for, for every single state. In general terms, what I would say is the Northeast in particular does 
reasonably well. For example, uh, Vermont, New Hampshire and Maine uh, have all received an, an A rating. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, we should be able to be up with these guys and beat these guys. On, on the one hand, and on the other hand, uh, you look at a state like California, it also has an A as well. The, gen the, the country's uh, grading is C, so we're better than what the country nationally is doing. Mm -hmm. But then if we look in the southern part of the United States, the, some of the rates are significantly higher. So it's, it's all over the place, but we in Rhode Island are moving in the right direction. Mm. Uh, our funding, which is received locally, does go to assist on a local basis, but also goes to assist the national picture as well. So we've got to get this down both locally and nationally. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm saying a lot better now. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I've got to sit down to be a tier system. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to field some more questions at you. Um, I was informed this morning that you guys had held a summit uh, about prematurity at, at uh, women and infants. Uh, how did how did that go and what did it entail? Amy, do you want to jump in? Sure. <laughs> uh, so we held a prematurity summit this morning, um, and primarily what the focus of that is is to really kind of take a look at over the past year, mm. um, there have been some task force that had been locally here in Rhode Island who put together to focus on a bunch of different areas that affect prematurity. Mm. Um, you know, social, economical, kind of what programs and services do we need to provide to families. Um, so really it was kind of taking a summary of all of those things that have happened over the past year, talking about what steps that they've been able to take, what, what the outcomes were, and then what's the plan moving forward. So as Neil was talking about, Rhode Island has a B grade according to that report card. Right. So what things can we implement within this state? What things need to change? in order for us to move from that B rating to the A rating. Um, and we were fortunate enough to have a speaker come in um, who is from California, who is part of that A state rating. What are some things that they've been able to implement in California successfully um, that have in turn are working towards dropping the prematurity rate within California? Um, and how can we implement some of those things here locally in Rhode Island? So it really is kind of a celebration of the past year and then taking a look at what are we going to be working on moving forward um, to hopefully get us to that A grade, which is so important. Right. Um, now, a lot of what you mentioned was uh, pertaining to local things. And for us here at a WXN, it doesn't get more local than Rhode Island College. So what's the uh, relationship between you guys and the college? Well, two of, a, two of our staff actually our, our Rhode Island College graduates. We've got a Mike Simeone, uh, where some of you may have heard Mike earlier on this morning. Mm -hmm. He was a 2012 grad, I believe, at uh, Rhode Island College. And uh, Nicole Aguiar, who is our Director of Program Services, she is a 2000 and somewhere around there. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think a little bit before 2012, but so, so Nicole uh, was a graduate and she went on to get her, her master's degree in social work at Boston University as well. So oh, wow. we, are, we are very proud of, of the Rhode Island connection, the Rhode Island College connection, and uh, we, are, we are delighted, as I said at the outset, that we have been able to uh, engage you and, uh, and be honoured with your support for, for this radio fund and bands for babies. And we also have some nursing students that yes, are working directly with Nicole from Rhode Island College. Oh, cool. um, so we have that connection as well. And one of your professors was speaking today at the Prematurity Summit. So there's a great connection here locally with Rhode Island College. And you guys are making a difference and an impact for us. So thank you for not only the Radiothon, but all that the college does anyway to support us. Oh, thank you. Uh, Rob, do you have any questions? No, I'm good. <laughs> you covered them all, all the basics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and tangentially, I mean, not directly related, but uh, my son Andrew mm. is going through the the accelerated nursing program at Rhode Island College uh, right now. He's a he's a URI grad. I know that maybe maybe. The, not appropriate to say, but we'll say that anyway. He's a URI grad. Should but be he, fine. But he, but he came, he had the opportunity of going through the nursing program at URI mm. or going through the nursing program at Rick. And it was a conscious decision on his part to actually come to 
in the college here. It's got a fine, fine reputation. And as uh, as Amy had said, we have we have worked both with interns uh, at Rhode Island College mm -hmm. uh, through the nursing program and some other folks as well. So it runs a little bit deeper than this radio thought. Deep veins. Deep veins. <laughs> I, I always think I have something, but then I, I kind of lose it. Well, you've been up for 17 hours now, Please. so that might be why. 17 and a half. <laughs> that half is very important. Um, if I may. Go ahead, Mike. I know Amy touched on it a little bit earlier, but Professor Sylvia Ross actually sits on one of our task force boards. Okay. This professor here at Rick. So she actually helps deciding where that funding goes. So when we oh. decide to fund a project, she has a direct hand in helping us with that. That's awesome. Uh, That's right. So I, I've never had him as a professor because I'm nowhere near a nursing major. But uh, I mean, I've heard the name, and he seems to do a lot of a lot of good work. Um, it seems to be all the questions that I have. So uh, do you guys have anything else to say? Anything else to throw out there? Anything to ask us? Or yeah, any questions for us? Well, no, we hope you guys are all going to bands for babies tonight. Yeah, of course. All right. You better be conscious. Sleep. <laughs> yeah. I will be fine. They baby me around here, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> because we, we're on air because we care. Ah. Uh, uh, <laughs> there we go. Rob. We got this coupon. <laughs> One day, we'll talk to Nancy about it. But um, if that's all, yes? Yeah. We, uh, again, just a, a emphasizing or re-emphasizing what Amy said. We really... I uh, do appreciate everything you, you guys are doing. We're looking forward to seeing you at Bands for Babies tonight. You can tell from my accent, I'm not from, from here. Mm. I'm from Brookline, Massachusetts. No. <laughs> 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 but, uh, so I'm, I'm originally from Scotland, and I may come in my kilt tonight. So oh! If that entices anyone, you know, I'll, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Exciting. So, uh, Bands for Babies, a reminder, that is tonight's right after this Radiothon, which ends at 8 p.m. Doors open at 7. It's at the Met, which is at 1005 uh, Main Street in Pawtucket. We've got seven hats parade. Who I'm still hoping wear silly hats. Is that too much to ask for? We should bring them hats. Maybe. We'll them we hats. have the sombreros to do it. We do. We'll we have enough hats oh, to do this. in my trunk. We'll yeah. see if we can get them to win. Sure. Um, we have Seven Hats Parade, the Cosmic Factory, Northeast Traffic, and Colorblind. I'm sure it's going to be a really great time. As I've said, doors open at 7, show starts at 8. Thank you, Neil and Amy, so much for being here. It's been wonderful working with the March of Dimes. It's just been a wonderful radiothon so far. We are on hour 17 and a half, and we're going to go to a commercial break, and we will be right back, so stay tuned. The radio thought thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Join us tonight at the Met Pawtucket for Bands for Babies. We always love it when people come on and make the door. Well, I'm glad we could break it up for you. So, did that pretty much be a great That was great. Yeah, it did.